I want to welcome you people on board and thank everyone that has taken this day to participate in this event because it is from one of us and it is through us that we can promote one of us to achieve his dream. And as much as he achieves his dreams and his ambitions, if he also shares that dream and ambition with us and find meaning and purpose in what he is doing, therefore we we'll share in that plight and we we'll benefit from it. So thank you all for being here. And we, since time is limited, we will not continue talking much. We'll hand the floor to Edwin, uh, Dr. Edwin Bungerman to start his presentation. And I want to appeal to everyone to give your listening ears, take some notes, have your pen, get a pen, get a paper, take some notes because it's gonna be serious. So thank you all. I'll give the floor to Bungerman. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, good afternoon, everybody, once again. Um, I just want to be to ex once more express um, uh, gratitude to everybody who have come here today. I think one of the things which, if we have learned one thing from this pandemic, it is more of the fact that, uh, you know, we can't, you can't do it on your own. We, we all have to work together, you know? And uh, as a people, the emphasis on the fact that uh, this pandemic affect us more, that we are dying more, that we need to do more. The emphasis have been so much. I, I, I think, Godi, I hope, or is it a host? Are, are you recording? Yes, I am. Yeah, because, okay, all right. And one of the things which we kept on hearing was more of black people are more vulnerable. Black people are more vulnerable. And the thing is that, yes, we were vulnerable to the virus, but what makes us vulnerable? What are the things that made us vulnerable? You know, that for me is going to be the base of today's talk. It is more about let us see what makes us vulnerable you know, and I mentioned today the things we are vulnerable right from our mother's baby in this country, not everywhere, right from the mother's stomach or from, from the mother's womb till when we die, we are vulnerable. And what are those things that make us vulnerable? Okay, before I start, I, I want to make a confession. <laughs> and my confession is that I never wanted to be a doctor. I'm not like all those people who are, I always grew up dreaming to be a doctor. I wanted to do and save people. No, I never. The question of who wanted me to be a doctor, that one is a story for another day. But uh, what I wanted to be, I become a Catholic when I was in primary three. I was baptized in Presbyterian. And I was an altar boy and I wanted to be a priest. But in addition to wanting to be a priest, I always remember as a young person, one of my aunts, she said, you are going to be a lawyer. You are going to be a very good lawyer. And up till now, she still calls me her lawyer. So in addition to wanting to be a priest, at the back of my head, I always thinking about being a lawyer. So today, I'm going to put my lawyer skills into action. And I want you to be the judge. So your assignment is to be the judge. And uh, the things I'm putting on trial are the things that make us vulnerable, the things that are killing us. There are four things, four accused. The first accused is stress. The second accused is diet. The fourth, the third accused is relationship, and the fourth, the fourth accused is movement. So we have on trial stress, relationship, diet, and movement. I'm accusing them for destroying our health, for killing us, and at the end of judgment, you will decide whether I make a good case against these four guys. And then your responsibility after that 
you will be the probation officer who is going to work very, very hard to turn these four accused into good people. So please remember your assignment. We have four people on us on, on trial. Okay, if you have questions, you put them down while we go along. So don't keep them and then forget them after. Okay. For us really, for me to put on a good case, let me just show you a background of where we are and what these guys have done. I think you can recognize this picture. If you don't, this is during our outreach in Kumbu, people coming and queuing on lines. It's another picture from the same place. This is people queuing, and the reason people queue is because of lack of health, right? Access to health. Question is, do you think such a thing can happen in this country? People queuing up from 6 a.m. to get access to health. If you don't think so, then I want you to see this is in this country. This is nothing here. Just before the pandemic in this country. This is Wellingborough. This is Pembroke. This is um, Sunbury in uh, Surrey. This is Wensbury, people standing up in the rain, early morning for health. This is in this country, 6 a.m. People standing under the rain, in the snow, all of that. And at the moment, 4.7 million people are waiting for an operation. And the waiting time, people who are waiting more than one year to see a doctor in this country, it's already more than a hundred times before the pandemic. So when we talk about 4.7 4. million people, that those are people who are waiting for an operation. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this to tell you that the damage which we have in this country with health, it's far above anything. There are more than a billion prescriptions that are dispensed every year. A billion prescriptions. You know, we are having more than a billion prescriptions. And more than half of the population, of the adult population in this country are on prescription drugs at all times more than half of the population. And 25% uh, of the adult population are on living on three or more prescription. That is permanently. And you have about 20% of the young population, children or people who are from the 19 to 24 years old, more than 20% of them are on prescription. This is the reason, the biggest reason is that the type of health that we are living with, our health system, is that which was prepared, unlike practically everything, our banking have changed, even the education, which they say have not changed, education have changed, our, the way we shop have changed, but we still have a health situation where you have to go in front of the doctor, he consult, listen to you at this thing, and within 10 minutes, he sent you away. And in addition to that, what do you see at the moment, the, what we call a clinical care, it's more of like these people who are in this place, where the elephant, where one person is looking and saying, I can touch the spear, it is the spear, it is the snake, it is the wall. It's the same way that 
allopathic medicine, which is more of the today's clinical medicine, is dealing with human beings. Where we go, when you have an eye problem, they look at your eye. When you have a kidney, you go to a specialist who deals only with your kidney. When you have a problem with your heart, a specialist deals only with your heart. And because of that, even when you deal with one of those issues, you still come back with the other one. Lifestyle medicine is more of, we need to look at the person as a whole. Take a distance and look and see the elephant. Rather than just looking, it, the view is that it takes the person as a whole, interconnected by his systems. So, like I was saying, have more than half of the population, you know, living with um, with uh, with on prescription drugs, and uh, the view is that just like we have a lot of people when we talk about health, a lot of people are more like exercise, diet, and exercise, diet and exercise. When we talk about health, those are the views, but actually it entails more. You know, and the most of, even though it entails a lot of things, most of those things, they will fall under those guys that are on trial today. And when we look, we see the number of people who are living on prescription. We look at the number of people who are dying. And if we look at something like diabetes alone, you know, more than 10% of the NHS budget is going on diabetes. Somebody is being diagnosed with diabetes in this country every two minutes. And 185 people are having amputations every week because of diabetes. More than 700 people are dying every week because of diabetes. So even though the lifespan for the people in this country have increased, we are living with drugs, you know? We've moved from a pill a day to several pills a day. And if you have a population of 64 million and more than a billion drugs are, these prescriptions are written every year, then you can see that we really have a problem. Better, there are places around the world, call them the blue zones, where people are living up to a hundred. It's not one person, it's a group of people, communities. Communities where in some places, more than 20% 20, 20 of the population is above living above a hundred. And they don't just live long, most of them, are living very healthily and are growing old. And those communities, scientists have been looking at those people to see what is it that make those people so special. So more, and you can, as you can see, there are many places around the world. You have the Okinawa in Japan, you have Sardina in Italy, you have uh, Loma Loma in California, in California. The one in California is the Seven Days Adventist community. You know, you have in Costa Rica, you have in Greece. So it has been a puzzle that is worrying some scientists, that scientists are thinking, what is it that makes these people so special? What is it that is keeping them, making them very different from everybody else? And these are the main things that we look at. When they look at, they see that these are the things that, you know, there is, High, uh, they don't, most of them don't take alcohol. There are people of faith. But if you look at the circle inside, you see most of them are living in families. There are people who hold family values. Smoking is very low. Mostly plant-based diet, social engagement. You know, those are the, most of the things that, uh, you know, that uh, are identified in people in those communities. You know? But in addition to that, 
I said I was going to, it's not going to be medical, but I'll be looking, I'll give you some references. There was a study that was done in Europe. And in that study, they look at the studies, they said, look at the generation, a vast majority of people, and they look at certain factors or certain things where they said, all right, with these people, if somebody is living healthily, more of eating mostly plant-based diet, not vegans, not vegetarians, not people who don't eat meat, but they eat meat, but not every time. If they are active, which is not, we are not talking about exercise, they are active. Not somebody who sits in one place all the time. If somebody is active, if somebody is living, is, you know, is, um, is eating healthily, if they are not smoking, if they do not feel stress, what are the things that, uh, you know, how will those people react in addition to things like the, these chronic diseases, things like diabetes, things like um, heart diseases, things like strokes. And when they take those four things into consideration, they realize that diabetes was reduced by up to about 98%. Heart diseases were reduced. You know, stroke was reduced by up to around 50%. Cancer reduced by up to around 30%. You know, and this is within a period of one year. So what I call the you know, what I have been calling lifestyle medicine is more of a new movement in health. It is scientists now who are looking into all of these aspects, looking at those things that I have mentioned. And looking at how they, are, they attack our life, looking at how they influence our lives, and looking at the same, rather than just concentrating on the, everything, when you say pain, they give drugs for it. When you say uh, fever, they give a drug for it. What are some of the things that affect people? Because the thing that we realize is more of, when we look at something like diabetes, it's not something that you get immediately. I'm not saying that the clinical medicine is bad. I'm not saying that allopathic medicine or clinical medicine is bad. What I'm saying is that most of the diseases that we have now, most of the diseases that are killing us are being treated in a way that we treat acute problems. Acute problems are problems which can be dealt with immediately, not long-term problems. They are being treated the way that if you have a sprain or if you were to sprain your leg or if you were to injure your back or if you need an operation, that you will be treated. Things like operation, very, very necessary. Things like surgery, very, very important. But uh, when we take things like said, uh, heart diseases, you take things like most of the cancers, you take something like obesity, you take something like diabetes, you take something like hypertension, you take something like, you know, most of the heart diseases. Those are things that take time before you get them. You don't get them immediately. You can, for some people, it can take even years before they get them. So the, the factors, some of the things that we are looked at with in those um, blue zones, they have we more of look at them, take those things, and uh, we said these are the main factors that affect that are responsible for most of those diseases that we call chronic diseases, the diseases that I mentioned. And of course, let me just mention more of them again. We have diabetes, we have hypertension or heart diseases, we have cancers, you know, and. Um, so most of those diseases, even things I said, the body pain, where most of the time people said, oh, I have body pain, you know, most of those diseases, all of these factors, they're contributing to them. And uh, 
the first person, the first accused, which I said I'll put on trial, stress. And if you look at the, this um, um, research or this article from Web Medicine, from Web uh, MD, it says 75 to 90% of the doctor's visit that we have today are stress related. And when we talk about stress, the question becomes what is stress? And uh, how does it, if you are going to put somebody to jail, you will first want to know what the person, the crime that the person commits, and the crime here is that the person is destroying health, how the person did it, want to see how they did it. Don't just take it because, yes, I know that stress makes people sick. The question as a judge is more of try to see whether this lawyer will make a good case for to put this person to jail. And stress, you look at this, this picture, you know, if you look at this picture, that is a reaction. And such a reaction is more like a stressful reaction. Stress is something which, for a lot of people, we've been hearing about fight or flight. And fight or flight is more of, in the early days, you know, when in our early days as human beings, the way we were made was more of, or at our time, like hunters and gatherers. We used to grow up with, with uh, human beings, we are more of said, when you meet something like a lion, you either stand and fight that lion, you will freeze, look at place and just get frozen, or you will run away. That is, you either fight, you freeze, or you flight. And stress was meant, stress is meant so that it can help you, prepare you to fight the lion, to freeze away and hide in a way that it doesn't see you or for you to run and escape. So it is the body's physiological response. It is the body's biology, the way that the body reacts when you come under stress. So stress, the way that, I always say that, you know, there is nothing that God gave us without use for it. Stress was for us to deal with that. And if you look at this, the, the, the little boy in this picture, he's more of his frozen. Either he's fro he, you know, his heart rate is either just is beating like tum 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 tum. You look at his eyes, the eyes, the the the, the, the pupils, they dilate so that you can see places and run faster. Your blood pressure increases so that you can be, you know to increase the, 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 the pumping. And what is it that make all these changes that takes place in your body? It is more of when you get, the body get an immediate hormon, hormonal response. Hormones are what? Hormones are like an injection that the body gives itself. So hormones, hormones are like injection that the body gives itself. You know, so normally if you give an injection, the body reacts to that injection. You know, so the body will release hormones, things like say cortisol, things like adrenaline, things like um, histamine, and all of those things, you know, all of those things, they will help you to get those reactions that I mentioned. And normally, when you get that, you run away, or you get that, you freeze, or you get that, you fight. And you finish fighting with a lion, you kill it, and you are fine. But the problem which we have is that, you know, there are three different types of stress. This is the first one. This is the second one. No, this is a stress. It is the response is not like the other one, but the physiology 
you still get the cortisol. The body doesn't know whether you are fighting the person physically. In your mind, the mind tells the body that you are in a fight. And the mind, the, 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 and the mind tells the body and the body will release the hormones that put you into fight. This type of stress is called distress and it drags on, you know? And the third type of stress is called you stress. This is this, the next type of stress. So, yes, you still get, your muscles are still active, but you know what? You want this type of stress to go on and on and on because you are enjoying it. Because in addition to the bad negative types of stress, you also get the one that is making you to laugh, that is making you to feel fine, that is making, you know, you get dopamine in addition to this type of stress. And it makes you to feel fine. It makes you to feel good. And it makes you to want to go on and on. Hormones for the bad stress that I mentioned, whether you have anger, whether you have fear, whether you have negative emotions, all of that, you get this cortisol, you get a norepinephrine, which is a noradrenaline, you get cytokine. And these are the hormones that, are like I mentioned, the ones that will prepare your body for you to run or for you to fight. You know, the bad thing is when you are in that state, even your digestion, it stops because digestion is not a priority. Everything for the body is set towards you fighting and running. If you face a lion, the last thing you want to be thinking is, let me go and to the toilet before I run away. You want to run away. So your digestive system switches off. Whether it is a we you want to make, it switches off. Whether it is the food which you are eating, it switches off. Your immune system, it switches off. Even the part of your brain that helps you to analyze things, to think, the part of your brain that the, your brain that operates is the automatic one. That uh, more of you don't think, you don't. The logical thinking is switched off. You know, so practically every aspect of your body is put on hold. And like I said, the way that. Uh, Stress was meant to operate was more of when you reach, when you, you take that within 10 minutes maximum, then you are supposed to calm down and relax. If when a, a, a rat sees a cat in the house, the rat run away and immediately it escapes, it relax. The difference with a human being is when you are faced with a problem, once you run away, you start thinking about it. It, it remains in you. You analyze, oh my God, why is it only me? Oh, how did this happen to me? What if this happened again? If this happened again, what is going to, what could have happened to my children? What could have happened to my work? What could have happened? Oh, the way was the lion going to start eating from my legs or from my heart? And all of that you are thinking and it is affecting you. When you have a fight, be it with your neighbor, be it with your wife, be it with your child, you have a quarrel, you drag it on for too long. And just like every organ of the body is being affected, the example I, I used to explain this is more of said driving from said from Coventry to Leicester in gear one. If you drive from Coventry to Leicester in gear one, the chances are, you know, either your engine knock or you go reach there and there are, you take your car to the garage, you can take it to the garage, you will check it and said, everything is fine because nothing has spoiled, but it has been pushed to the limit. And that is the issue 
where for lots of people, they are pushed to the limit, but everything looks fine. And the problem which we have now is that the reason with the problem we have with stress is that we work, we wake up in the morning. You start a quarrel in the house, either with the children or with your missus or with your neighbor. You enter the car as you are going to work. You have pro, you are having you are quarreling because of traffic. You reach work, you are already frightened, or you are quarreling with your colleague or with your manager. You are tense, you didn't do what you are supposed to do. You are living in fear. When you go on break, you are standing on queue, you are looking at the time, you are worried already. You come back home, you enter another quarrel. And something that was supposed to be only for 10 minutes maximum, we now have it throughout the day. And even the TV, when we watch, we are getting it. And the thing with a human being, like I said, we are not some parts, parts. With a car, you can say the problem is with a gearbox. The problem is with a ball, and you remove that ball and change it. The problem is a tire, and you change that tire. The thing with a human being is that every thought, every feeling, every emotion, every action that you have is communicated throughout your whole body. It changes the composition of your blood. It changes the composition of how your nerves work. It changes the, how your genes work. And it changes how your cells work. And like I say, if you are in a situation where even your digestion is being affected, your, your elementary canal, everything is being affected, your blood composition is being affected. Even your mind is being affected. We living in that state for 24 hours, for 20 hours, for 10 hours, for eight hours, for two hours. You are like a car that is being driven on gear one, in gear one. And if it doesn't, if the engine doesn't knock, then at least one time or the other, you will fall and you will die. And so often we hear, we said, oh, there is a sportsman. This person was a, a, a foyer and he's a sport person. And he's been living, they, they eat the, the, the food for sportsmen. That is fruit and vegetables. They eat healthily as sportsmen. They do exercise every time. But then the sports person collapsed and died. And somebody said, if there is one person who was very conscious about their health, meanwhile, you don't know what that person is going through with their wife. You don't know what that person is going through at work. You don't know what that person is going through with the neighbor. You don't know what that person is going through with the children. And at one time, it collapsed. And one of the worst things that this stress does is that stress causes what we call inflammation. Inflammation in the normal layman sense is more of when you burn your hand, you can get something like a blister in it. If you even when even when you hit your you hit any part of your body, you will get like a blister, the place can get swollen, the place can get red. That is an inflammation. That is the physical one which we can see. But there is also internal inflammation. And that internal inflammation is more also where the body will, will produce chemicals. And those chemicals, they can attack your blood. They can attack even the way the food that we eat, the digestion, they attack practically every aspect of your body. And things like diabetes, things like heart diseases, things like cancer, and most of the diseases that we call chronic diseases, at the base of it now is inflammation. So those are the things that stress does. So please, like I said, stress is killing us. 
better. It doesn't have to be that way all the time. The next thing, the, the other thing which I said is killing us is relationship. You know, when we look at relationship, there is a relationship with yourself, there's a relationship with others, there's a relationship with God, the relationship with the environment. Most of the things that we talk about stress, they come on, they depend on how we manage these things. If you manage them well, then you will get an, the opposite of what we get with stress. And the opposite is more like when you have something like love or when you relax. Normally they say, oh, you are too stressed, please, you should be relaxing. Oh, you are too stressed, you should be relaxing. Relaxing is very, very important. If you really believe that stress is a problem, then you should look at this. When you relax, or when you are in love, be it a loving one, or a sexual love, or love that you just have for anybody or for anything, you have dopamine. Dopamine, like I said, is the feel good hormone. It's what makes us, what you, makes you feel fine. It makes it is it, is what gives you joy. And you know, like I said, that in the you stress, there's other stress where you have, you know, when you have a a, a lovely thing, a lovely play, even though you stretch your body, but you get dopamine. Dopamine is more like it's the hormone that you know. If you see an orange tree. And you are going towards that orange. So every step that you go, the closer you go, the body gives you dopamine. It encourages you to go again, you know? And when you hold it, you get a big dose of it, a full rush of it. It will help you, you get things like saliva come up, you know? Dopamine is the feel good hormone. You have um, oxytocin. Oxytocin is, you know, when it's like when you are in love, is the hormone that makes you want to hold somebody. It makes you want to it it, it bring it strengthen bond with other people, bringing you together. You know, is the one that makes you every time you feel you when you are especially like you know in love with somebody. It's what makes you want to cuddle somebody. You know, when you see like somebody cuddle somebody, they feel it. That is the hormone that brings that. You have vasopressin, which is more like the one that makes you glow, makes you look fine, makes you, you know, normally God gave that one so that when somebody is in love, the person can look beautiful, you know? So you look at the person, all you see the person is glowing. There is the growth hormones, you know? Growth, not just in terms of you feeling tall or feeling big, because Every day we lost millions of cells and the new cells have to come to replace the ones that are dying, that we are losing. And at least for that to happen, that is the growth that is coming in. You get a lipstick oxide, which is the one that, you know, is the one that we say it gives butterfly in your heart. You know, it makes your heart swell. It increases blood, it makes the blood rush, you know, and especially like when you are in love, it makes that place, blood flow in the place down there to be more than anything and makes a place sensitive. So you know what I mean down there. And the opiates are like the, <laughs> the things that make you feel high, you know? So all of these hormones, we have them in us. They are more like the love hormones, they are the relaxation hormones. And if you can replace the bad hormones that we talk about, the one for stress, the one for anger, the cortisol, the norepinephrine, the cytokines, the histamine, if you can replace them with these ones, get the good things of it. But the thing with this, with the good hormones is that that is where the thing about relationship coming. And the first relationship which we talk about, which we have to realize is the relationship with ourselves. The relationship with ourselves, you know? Because the thing is that 
so often, even be it communication, we have a lot of emphasis on good communication skills, which is more like communication skills with other people. But the biggest communication, the most important communication is the communication that we have with ourselves. Because anything that happened, we just see it from the outside. It is the interpretation that we give ourselves that give meaning to it. And if I take an example of said, in a relationship, let's say when I started with Maureen, when I said, I love you, all those feel good hormones, they come in. You know, all of the love hormones, they will come. And, you know, she will feel good. She will feel like bursting up. She will feel beautiful. Everything, feel butterflies in her. That is when love starts. Better. What if we were going through a bitter divorce and everything is breaking down? If I said, I love you, the same words that I said last time, I said, I love you. It becomes, <laughs> it becomes the, it becomes the cortisol that will rush because the interpretation is, oh, he's telling me he loves me after, after he's been beating me. He's telling me he loves me. Especially if she's found somebody whom she already loves. It's like he wants to destroy this little relationship. So the interpretation she gives herself is prepare yourself for a fight. That I love you is dangerous thing. You don't want to hear it. So what I'm simply saying is I love you can mean a very different thing at one time. And I love you can mean another different thing at the, at the other time. So it is what we communicate with ourselves. It's the meaning that we give to anything that happens to us. If the perception is that this is good, your body will give you the few good hormones. If your perception is that this is dangerous, your body will give you the bad hormones that you should run away or that you should fight. You know, so usually they said, it's not what you say, it is what it means to me. Whatever you say doesn't mean anything. It's the imprecation that I give it. All right. And so if we get a good relationship with ourselves, then no matter what people tell you, sometimes they said, you know, all right, when the bad things happen, we said, look for the positives. And if you look for the positives, you find the positives, you will feel good with it. If you have a bad manager at work, and you said, I like somebody who puts me, who challenges me, and you are looking at it in a positive way, you are not going to get the bad hormones with it. You will get the good ones, you know? If you have somebody who sometimes we said, oh, this person argues too much, or this person challenges me too much. And if you said, it depends on, do you like challenges? If you like challenges and you say, this person challenges me too much, then you will enjoy the challenge. And every time you are with that person, you will enjoy it. And even if that person is giving it in a bad way, you will always look for the good way in it. So it's the, it's the interpretation, it's the relationship we have with ourselves. If you have a negative relationship with yourself, everything becomes negative. If you are happy, everything else becomes happy. You know, some people are very happy. No matter what you tell them, they always find a good way of looking at it. Some people are negative. No matter how good it is, they will look for a way to make it bad. Every time they are with you, they will tell you their problems. They will tell you their this. You say, can you try this? They will tell you why it will not work. Have you tried talking to No, I'm telling you. And then if you can deal with that one, that is good. The second is relationship with other people. You know, <clears throat> one of the things which they are saying, one of the, the, one of the things that now is more of said loneliness. Loneliness is one of the biggest issues now. 
know. And if you look at the, this uh, paper from uh, the National Institute of Health, from American Library of Health, you know, you have this quotation from Mother Teresa, and, uh, and she says, the greatest disease in the West today is not TB, it's not leprosy, it's being unwanted, unloved, uncared for. And the cure, and we can cure physical diseases with medicine, but the only cure for loneliness, for despair, for hopelessness is love. You know? And when we look at that, research is now saying that loneliness has the same impact on mortality as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, making it more dangerous than obesity. You know? And the thing is that why are people lonely? And for me, me, you ask many people who are lonely, they tell you 1,000 reasons on why they don't want to interact with other people. When we say, go to Kifu, oh no, uh, the people are showing off. Uh, go to, 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 to Banin, oh no, uh, Banin people are this. Oh, is this type of people there? Is this type of people there? Man, it's a tribal being. A human being is meant to be with other people. And being with other people mean not what I get from them. We came to this world. All of us came to this world with something. With something. And part of that something can be, at least the way that you see that what, and you identify that it is wrong, then try to look for what is, how can I fix it? You know? And people are isolating themselves. And in most cases, we isolate ourselves because we cannot manage ourselves. We, iso we run away from other people because we cannot manage ourselves. And if you, like I mentioned that the, our relationship with ourselves, if your relationship with yourself is good, then in a community of people, in a group of people, in a society, in a tribe, you will find a way of how you can fit in. You will, don't cover yourself with, oh, there is this person there that does this. Oh, the people there are showing off. If they are showing off, then they need somebody who will come there and teach them humility. And it is your place to go there and teach them humility. Not to run away and uh, keep yourself alone. You know? So we need to look at how we relate with other people. And like I said, or like, you know, research is showing people who are in good, you know, people who belong to group, people who interact with other people, they live healthier. When I mentioned the thing about health, there is, you know, there is something which, have been identified, we said in America, where they said, even though they said black people's health is poor, black people are vulnerable to lots of these diseases. There is something which they identify and they call it the immigrant paradox. You can write it down and you can look at it later on. They call it the immigrant paradox. And the immigrant paradox it's more like something, if you, the, the recent research which they talk, where they're talking about black people, the one that was, was very scandalous, the, uh, what they call it, uh, what report? They, 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 this report that this guy came on, which they were saying, which, please can someone write it down? They knew the, the report, the guy who did the thing and was saying that the uh, black people don't have a problem. Oh, it's commission, the, what, what, what commission? Commission for racial. Yeah, the Commission for Racial Something, which the guy wrote about. Okay, in one of the things which was identified there, they said that 
West African children are performing higher, far better in school than other children. That was one of the things that was identified. And according to them, they were more like, oh, the problem is at home, it's not with the system. But the immigrant paradox exists in health. And the immigrant paradox is more of what they identified in America is that the newly arrived immigrants, their health status is better than the health status of ordinary Americans, is even better than the health status of white Americans, it is better than the health status of immigrants that have been living there. And the one thing, one attribute which, you give, which they give to the immigrant paradox is that newly arrived immigrants, they don't see things the way that many of us who have been here that we see it. They see things differently. You come to this place, somebody tells you, thank you, love. You say, wow, he loves me. <laughs> you give yourself a, 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 do a dose of dopamine. You give yourself a dose of oxytocin. Another person, now, the longer you stay here, they say, thank you, love. You say, ah. <laughs> you say yeah, this is how they are, bad people. You start calling names. You start being angry because somebody called you love. And uh, for the immigrant, they come here, they appreciate everything, even the things that we are not happy with. You call them names, it doesn't mean anything. They tell you the name doesn't hurt. It doesn't stitch on their body. You know, they take things very differently. The newly arrived immigrants, they go to church. And there is research that have been shown that people who go to church, they live 14 years longer. They go to places like church. They look for groups like Bobbin and Kintintin and Kifu and Kifu. They are asking for it because they want to be with people. And they go there and they enjoy everything. And for people who have been living here longer, when you go sometimes, you go there, you see that, oh, that Shay Siri has come. He's showing off already. I start feeling angry. The new person come, he sees Shay Siri. He said, wow, that guy is enjoying his body. The new person is already thinking, that's how I'm going to enjoy my body in this country. I'm looking for my own time. He sees Shay Siri with a car. He's not jealous. He's thinking, I'm going to get a car like this one. He's thinking, Oh, hurrah, I am now in the land of opportunity. I'm going to get my own. Their attitude is very different. But the longer we stay, the longer our attitude changes. And the longer the newly arrived immigrants they stay, the longer their this thing stays. The longer their health status get worse. So first generation, their health status is the, the Health status for 10th generation is the first generation, the health status is worse. Second generation status is even worse. You know, the longer you stay, the more bad your health becomes. And now you stop going to church because you have already built an enemy today. You stop going to Jangi because. Um, uh, you, you wanted to host Njangi the first month and they gave it to somebody else. You stop interacting with people because I'm the, one, the, I'm the only one who have been calling them. They don't call me. No, you call people because you want to talk. You don't call people because they want to talk. Me like this, I call people who, whether they want to talk with me or they don't, I do. You know, so our relationship with people, it's how we take our relationship. You know, and the same aspect, our relationship with God. You might not call it God, something greater than yourself. You know, be it with Allah, be it with God, be it with whatever you call it. Some people just call it the spirit. How do you relate to it? Is it something that when you have problems, you say that, you know, as a person of faith, 
this is bigger than me, but I leave it to you, my Lord. Or is it some, something what you said? It's my problem. I don't have any, I don't have anything else. It's just me, or I don't have anybody. People who have faith, people who have some somebody that they can turn to, their head is far more better, their head is far more stronger, and many of them can easily cure some of their diseases by concentrating and believing. We say that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Those mountains are not only the physical ones, even there are mountains in you. I always say that, oh, people are saying they have gone to prophet this, 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 and the prophet heal. Me like this, if my sister or my brother or anybody tells me, I want to go to the prophet, my biggest thing is, do you believe that the prophet will heal you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I will give you the transport to go. Because even if that prophet is not healing, if you believe that you will be healed, you will be healed. And there are many prophets that heal people and people go and give testimony and the prophet think they are just supporting their businesses or just supporting their work, but actually the people have been healed. Why? Because they liberate themselves and those mountains collapse. There is an example more of when you believe and when you have faith. In medicine, they call it the placebo. And the placebo is more of something. It's like a pill. It's like chalk. Where they will take two groups of people, you know, normally when they want to test the drugs, they will take two groups of people, give the drug to one, give the other drug to Give, give the other people a placebo. And uh, normally they have seen that even when people take the placebo, they do get well. A lot of people do get well. And one of the biggest examples of placebo, of how effective the placebo can work, is if you put on your Google, you put a placebo and you put Mr. Right, right as in W R I T. It's an example of an American doctor. He was treating a patient who had cancer. The cancer, they said that the cancer was the size of a tennis ball in his limbs. Cancer was, has already spread all over his body. And this person was so sick and the doctor didn't believe that he would pass the weekend without getting well. And the man read about a research that was going on about the drug. Oh, no, I want, I've just forgotten the name of that drug. Anyway, the, 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 his, he, the man read about the, the, the research that was going on about the drug. And uh, when the man read about the research, I think the Cribiosin, uh, the Cribiosin was the name of the drug. And the patient told the doctor, please doc, put me on that drug. The doctor says, no, we can't put you because uh, the criteria to put somebody on that drug was more of somebody needs to be to be able to live for at least three months. The, his doctor knew that this guy was not going to live for more than three days. He insisted. The doctor said, okay, I'll put you on it. The doctor put him on that drugs. On Friday and on Monday, when the doctor came on round, the doctor saw him thinking the man was going to be lying almost is it, waiting to see he's dead. The doctor saw him walking around the ward, talking with people, feeling fine, and they checked his cancers. And according and in the words of the doctors, he says they have melted like ice balls. Why? Because this person believed so much that this research, because he read it and he saw it, and he believed so much that he was going to be, this drug was going to cure him. And then he was living well. And they said, uh, two months after that, a research came out. They make a, a, um, they make a report about the drug. And the report says, 
oh, credibility doesn't work. That the drug doesn't work. And immediately he read that drug, the next day, his cancer came back. And the situation was so bad. And the doctor went back to him and said, you know the previous in which I gave, which I gave you, actually that one doesn't work. This is the real thing. And what the doctor was, doctor said, I'm going to inject you with this one. This one is the pure form of crediosi. And the doctor injected him with distilled water. Distilled water is like water that has evaporated and they collected it. The doctor injected him with distilled water. And the man believed that it was the perfect crediosi. And the next day again, everything disappeared. And for a long time, this person was healthy. And I think they said that, um, um, I think they said two years or, or so after, the new report come out again. Now, the man went and read something now. They said, definitely that thing, they have done all the research, they have done everything and it doesn't work. And two days after he read that, he died. Look, you can look at it. Krebiozin, Dr. M. M. Patient's right. It's not his real name, but that was the name they gave. What am I saying here? I'm saying, if you have faith, even on something, even on something that you can hang on to, if you can hang on your rosary, if you can hang on a tablet, if you can hang on anything, if you have a status, if you can hang on anything, that you believe in, if you have faith as small as a most part city, you will move mountains, be it external mountains or internal mountains. I have seen it over the years, over the years. And the last relationship, which I mentioned is relationship with the environment. Just like our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with other people, our relationship with our God or with our faith or with our with spirituality, our relationship with our environment. How we react with the environment, how we prepare the environment in which we live with, it affects our health. If you live in a claustrophobic environment, you will feel claustrophobic all the time. If you live, you have a very beautiful garden where you go in and you can enjoy your flowers and then look at the flowers. Some people can stand for 30 minutes and enjoy a flower. Enjoying means that the good hormones that we mentioned, your body emits them. And when you go out, sometimes we said, Please, you go out and just go and relax. And people go out to think. No, that is not relaxing. And most of the thinking is negative thinking. And then you said you are relaxing. And by the time you finish relaxing, you are sweating. No, you are not relaxing. We said that you should relax. You go and put a film and see people killing and see people fighting. And as you are seeing it, everything you see, everything you hear, you feel it and your body doesn't know whether you are part of that film as they are running and you are feeling it and you are being carried away, your body is thinking that you are in it. You are stressed. You are at the peak stress when you are watching it. And that is why when being in war where people get trauma, sometimes you just look at it and it touches all your nerves. And you look at it and it affects you. If you can relax to music, not the boom, 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 noisy one, but music which you can listen and say, listen to the musician and say, wow, how did this person think this thing? Listen to somebody think about love and feel love. Listen to somebody's you know, talk about Kumbu and feel Kumbu. You know, that is good. If you can think, if you can sit down, 
if you can, when you have a shower, you feel, close your eyes and feel the water. Feel each and every drop of the water. Feel it. Anything that you can feel positively will give you a positive thing. And the thing with all of those relationships, the thing with relaxation, the thing with love is that all of it, it counteracts the stress that we have every day. In the modern time, in the, in, in the early, early man time, when people were hunters and gatherers, you run away with the stress. When you catch the thing from hunting, you come back and you sit down with the, with the, with the tribe, around the fire, you talk stories. All of that is wiped away. All of that, the negativity, all the tense things is relaxed. But with us now, you finish from that, you come home, you put on TV, you listen to war, you listen to the news, you listen to the negativity. They tell you how people are dying in India. They tell you how people are, and then you feel so sad about people dying in Brazil that you get sick in Coventry. You get feel so sad about people dying everywhere. People that you don't know, that is the problem that our technology is doing to us. And you go to bed, even the last thing before you are closing your eyes, you are watching a movie where people are dying, where people are running, and you are lying on your bed and running. And that is what is killing us. And you will not feel it immediately. You wake up in the morning, you said, I am fine. The, the, the thing is, it is eating your body and eating your body and eating your body. And like they say, a human being is like a frog. If you put it inside water and you keep on increasing the temperature of the water, they will be enjoying it until the thing will burn them and kill. That is how we are. The stress eats our body slowly, 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 slowly until we lost the whole thing. So please, when you go out into the environment, if you go look at the hills and enjoy them, please get connection, get connection with the environment when you are there. I usually said, when I'm talking to somebody, talking to people back home, I said, go for a walk. And when I say go for a walk, it is not just about you moving like a, like a mechanical thing that walk, go and come back. I am saying, try to see something that you have not seen before. Try to hear something that you've not heard before. Try to smell something that you've not smelled before. And at least test something that you've not tested before. And when you are trying to feel something, look for the feeling, good feeling. You want to touch something, try to look for something. Even if it is just a tree, you pass that this time and you said, wow, you look at that tree. It's so small. You touch it. You admire the leaves. You admire the flower that you've been passing here and didn't realize that there was a flower here. Please just stop sometime and get connection with something in the environment. Get connection, even if it is your phone. Sometime, just sit on your own, hold your phone and look at it and say, oh, wow, this guy, you know, this, um, he, the, the, how did somebody think on this? I think I like it, it is smart. Admire, admire something. Be, just stop sometime for one minute and get connection with things and try and let it be positive connections. So if you can get positive relationship, it will counteract the other one. The problem which we have now is that our relationship with ourselves is in intoxicated. Our relationship with our with other people is intoxicated. With every group we have, we look for reason to fight. Our relationship with our God is judgmental. We say, God, why did you do this to me? God, why have you forgotten us? Why do we leave our country with this way, God? Why is this one like this? If God loves me, why is he doing this to me? No, it is his time. And then when we say, yeah, leave it to God's hand, we said, yes, I have left it. And you don't leave it. You leave it and you are sitting and waiting. Why has he not finished it? No, you leave it with him. He's leaving it with him. 
And when you leave it, you surrender it. And if you leave it and surrender it, then it is with him. So often we said, oh, when the Lord closes the, the, the door, somewhere else he opened the window. I'm telling you, most of us, he closed the door and we banged that door and he opened the window that is bigger than the French door and we don't even see it. Because we keep on banging the door. That's the relationship we have with our God. We pray and we sweat because we are shouting, we want him to hear. And sometimes we just need to just go calm and get connection with him and feel every word that we are talking. So please, I hope that you are here. talk about diet so often when you said you are diabetic when you said you are overweight so often they tell you eat fruits and vegetables eat fruits and vegetables i know that if we were saying uh, if we say that diet is not enough for diet this and that diet is part of it it's not the only thing if you have seen the two other guys who have been on fire diet is one of the issues and the thing with diet is that diet have been eliminated to, or have been reduced in our today's health system to eat fruits and vegetables, eat fruits and vegetables. But the thing with diet is that what you eat, when you eat, how you eat, all of them are very important. And when we say what you eat, Yes, you eat fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables. But if you are eating fruits all the time, five fruits, we said, five a day. And sometimes you drink fruit, you drink um, a fruit juice because it is fruits. No fruit juice is sugar. Right. I'll go into more details into this, but one thing which, if you are going to forget everything in diet, there is one thing which we call microbiome. Microbiome. If you look at these pictures here, just from the Amazon, you look at picture A, picture B, picture C. If you are an animal, I know which one I will, which of these three places I would like to stay. There are three pictures. I don't know which one you choose, but I choose A. And the thing is that what research is now showing is that inside our stomach, the gut, what we call the gut, is more like the digestive system. It's a digestive system from your mouth up to your anus that big tube, inside that tube, we have what we call the micro, uh, uh, the, the, the micro, microbiota. And this microbiota is microbes. Microbes are like things that we call gems. And most of what is there is bacteria. Lots, millions, and millions, not millions, trillions, trillions of bacteria are living inside us, especially in the area of the small intestines. And these trillion bacteria, trillions of bacteria, they depend on our inside, our gut for their survival. And for them, the inside of our gut, for some people, they are like A, some people like B, some people is like C. And that these microbes that are there, now, I said that there are trillions of them. And it is estimated that there are around 100,000 trillions of them inside our guts or inside our intestines. And if you think that a human being is made of cells, 
cells in our human body are like blocks that we use to build a house. So when the house is built, you look at the house, the house looks full. You don't see the block. But they put one by one by one block to build a house. Cells into a human body are like blocks. All right. Our body, if I look like so this Bongaman here, Bongaman have around 70 trillion cells. So if I have if a human body have around 70 trillion cells and our gods have more than 100 trillion cells, what that tells you is that there are more of those foreign bodies that are living in you than the you. There are more bacteria on your body than your cells. And if we are made of cells, it means that we are more microbes than human. We are more microbes than human. And just like how we, the human being now, are destroying the environment in which we live, as we are destroying the ecology of where we are living, just like now they said, oh, the ecosystem, the ecosystem, you have an internal ecosystem. And if your internal ecosystem is destroyed, then those bacteria will suffer. And when those bacteria suffer, the consequences for us is massive. God is so wonderful. He doesn't make anything without work. Before, they didn't know the importance of these bacteria. You look at it, if you just look at this, you can look at that later on. It's from the British uh, uh, Medical Journal, 2018. And the thing with the microbes is that those microbes, if you look, if we take like one of them, because the microbes, they act like industries that are inside our body. They produce chemical reactions and those chemical reactions are help in our digestion. Those chemical reactions, they can even act, affect our mind. The chemical reactions, they affect our mind. The chemical reactions, they affect our blood. The chemical reaction affects even our nervous system. And the chemical reaction affects practically every aspect of a human body. Now, they used to say that if they look at your gene, they could say that, oh, because of this type of gene, you are going to have this type of disease. Now, they are saying that the microbiome or the microbes in your stomach the microbes that are in your stomach, they can easily determine more of your health situation than your genes. They are now a bigger determinant of your health situation than your genes. And the thing is that as there are trillions of them, those trillions are very different. They are very diverse. They are different. It's like said, you have a, 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 a jungle where you have the monkey, where you have the rat, where you have mafsi, where you have birds, where you, they are, they, the diversity is very high. And the more the diversity, the more better it is for you. And the lower the diversity, the more dangerous it is for you. So these bacteria, one of the things which they realize is that if they look at one of them, one of the microbes or one of the, 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 the bacteria, they have something like a coat on their body and that coat releases chemicals, you know, called lipopolysaccharides. Those chemicals, they, remember I mentioned inflammation, that chemicals that they release, it can affect inflammation. And the thing with the bacteria is that when they don't get what they need to eat, then they start eating your stomach the wall of your stomach. And when they eat the wall of your stomach, when they leave the, 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 the chemicals which they produce, the chemicals are very fine inside your stomach. But if the chemicals go into your blood, there are toxins. And those toxins are destructive. The toxin, they can cause things like septic shock. The toxin, they can cause, you know, you can, 
cause you shock, the toxin, they can give you diseases. And now they are linking that diseases, like I mentioned, inflammation, diseases like your blood pressure, diseases like your diabetes, diseases that like, um, like stroke, diseases like cancer, all of these diseases, those diseases that I mentioned, that are meaning increasing the massive diseases that are taking us to the doctors today. Those diseases that they say black people are more vulnerable to. Those diseases are being Those diseases are being influenced by these bacteria in our stomach. I don't have I don't have coins. You know, those diseases are being Minimum affected by these pounds. bacteria. I'm sorry, maybe I've got longer than we're supposed to, but you know. So they, that's what happened when you put Edwin to talk. He just talk. <laughs> I will try and, and go faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please. All right. And the thing is, when you eat healthily, and healthily mean, sometimes we say healthily, fruits and vegetables are good. But the emphasis is that you can eat anything. Not anytime. But the anything, when I say anything is more of, it needs to be whole food. There was a video that I put, which I shared, I think it was shared in Berlin, where I talk about, when we talk about carbohydrates, that the problem with the carbohydrates that we have is that they are processed carbohydrates. And most of those processed carbohydrates they get digested before they even reach where these guys are present. The biggest thing that this thing lives on is fiber. And when we take a processed carbohydrate, they have removed the fiber from it. Be it the corn, be it rice, be it fruits. When you take fruits and you squeeze them, you throw away the fiber. And these things, they live so well on fiber. These things, they live so well on fermented food. Things like a kefir, things like yogurt. They live so well on those foods. Those are the things that these things need. So if you take care of them, they take care of you. They live in you. They don't cause any problem. But if you don't, they cause massive problem. So if you think about diet, for me, the emphasis is you have to think, is whatever you are eating, is it fitting these guys? And these are, you know, sometimes when you hear like this, uh, they said, oh, there is yogurt, it's a probiotic yogurt. They are simply saying, it's a yogurt that is good for your good bacteria. It's a yogurt that is good for your good bacteria. And uh, things, the, the, the recommendation is that if you can eat, like said, you know, more plant-based, different variety. If you are eating fruit, eat different colors of fruit. Don't just say five a day and you eat five apples. Don't just say five a day and you are eating five oranges every day. No, please eat variety, you know? And they say, if you are using herbs, the more that you eat, the more the variety of the things that you eat, be it spices that are herbs, the more variety, the more of those different, the variety of the microbes that you also feed. And if you look at this diagram, it tells you the diseases that, you know, that the thing causes, it causes into insulin, which I have mentioned, you know, and then those at the top in, in uh, purple, or is it pink, are the things that destroys it. And on your right are the things that are so good for it. You know, and the next thing that I want to talk about diet, I said, when we talk about diet, it is what you eat. The second thing is when you eat. And when we look at this research, there is what we call time restricted feeding. Some other way we call it is intermittent fasting. And I have done a video on fasting. And I talk about the importance of fasting. And when you fast, when you stop eating, 
you also give those microbes in your body the time for them to walk and eat every other thing else and do the cleanup in your stomach before the things that before the next food comes and the research the one that i just showed you this is let me just show you these diagrams it explains more on the, the importance for time restricted feeding if you look at the it has been done so far in animals and now they are doing it they are testing to see how it works on human beings if you look at the first the diagram on top they take an obese mice or an obese rat they give it junk food and the mice eat it at any time that it wants the top diagram the top one it eats it around the club anytime it wants the rats become morbidly obese if they give that rat the same junk food in time restricted feeding which is more of you give it you take nine to twelve hours without giving without eating anything and then you eat the mind the, the rat will become obese but it will be fit even though it's eating junk food but it is very fit if you take a lean mice that is if you are healthy and you eat junk food and you are eating anytime you see it the way we have been eating now we have been eating like kuja anytime we see we eat anytime we see we eat if you take it and you are healthy and you eat it like that you will become obese but if you take if you are lean and you eat junk food in a time restricted manner, you will not only be lean, you will be lean and you'll be very, very fit. If you take a lean mice and you reduce the time restriction more of during the week, I will be fasting during the week. I do my intermittent fasting during the week and during the weekend, I eat whatever I like, anytime I like, you will become lean and fit. That is why I like about this. Because I don't want to go for burning and they say, I am fasting. I don't want to go to burning and say, I don't want to eat pop off because it is carbohydrate. I don't want to go to burning and say, I don't want to. You can go. This research is telling us if you can manage and be very careful and fast during the week to pit match it with your job and uh, during the weekend you will still be good time restricted feeding this is why when you eat matters because even without this research it's been proven when you eat and you give your body the time to work on all those things it affects you practically every aspect of your body you know so please this is very very important and i say people should fast and people are oh no you know i can't oh no this please try it and i say it's not about you trying first time and doing it all throughout i did two days anita the first time i talked with anita she said she cannot do one day but after fasting during Lent, Anita went for went ahead. First, she did the two days that I did. And the next time I talked with her, she's done four days, four days without food. And people said, you are starving. No, you don't starve because your body feeds you with food that have been stored. Every time you eat, your body stores it. Your body uses what it wants to use and then it stores the rest. So please, that is the most important thing I want to say about the diet. If this other research is more, they said, for long, we have been more of, the emphasis have been more of, oh, reduce fat, reduce fat, low fat food. 
most of what we are now realizing is that when they say low fat, they will put sugar on it and they put the sugar and they, they will disguise the sugar to make it taste. And there are 60 different names of sugar. They will tell you there's no sugar in it, but there is. And the research here is simply saying, when they put people who are on low calories diet and the people who are on low fat diet, it's from the um, uh, uh, general, uh, for, okay. When they put people who are on that, some people, their average at the end of 12 months, they have lost practically the same amount of weight. Some people lost up to around 25 kilo, uh, kilogram at the initial stage, but the longer you go, you start putting it back. You know, it is the same thing with exercise. When you fast, the fasting help in, you know, with adjusting your hormones. When you don't fast, yes, you can lose weight, but your hormonal imbalance will make you feel more hungry. Your hormonal imbalance will stop your body from, you know, you will reduce what you are eating, but your body will not reduce what it is working on. The last thing, this is the last one now, please. I know, I know we've gone too much on the time. The last one is movement. And movement is more like exercise. And when we say exercise, I say movement because when we say exercise, what do we have realized is that when they say exercise, people do exercise. You said do at least 30 minutes of exercise. People go, they sit in one place for the whole day. And then they come in the morning, in the evening, and then they will try to get their 30,000 steps. That is stressful. That is not healthy. Some people spend the whole week sitting down, and then they go to the gym, and then they're in the gym for two hours. They're sweating in the gym. That is stressful. The body is interpreting that as stress, especially when you are doing it and not enjoying it. If you are doing and enjoying, that's fine. But if you are doing and pushing above your limits and pushing your body, the body doesn't know. The body will think you are running away from the lion. And the body will produce, will give you the hormones that will make you run away even further. And it will stop other things else from working. It will remove the good hormones and give you the bad ones that will help you in that. So the emphasis is that if you can more of just do little bits every hour, little bits every hour, put your clock, at least don't sit and they said, when you come at home, you sit one place and send the child to go do this. Please do it. Go upstairs and do it. I know if my daughter hears this, you say, I will sit here, put my foot, and ask her to bring me something from beside me. But please, we should be avoiding that. Please try to move. And the one other thing is that they said, when you go to the gym and you push so much, when you come home, you just end up just sitting in one place. That's your body trying to adapt you because your body wants to keep you all the time at an equilibrium. You want to bring your weight to where it is. And that is why when people lose weight, sometimes for, for long, you lose weight, your body looks for way to bring it back to where it was. It will discourage you from using the step. You will be thinking, oh, but I've been to the gym, so I don't use the steps. You take the lift. It will just tell you, stop you from going upstairs. You will say, oh, I don't need to go upstairs. I don't need to be moving. You sit in one place and relax. And then when you relax, your body conserves the energy, which it is supposed to be burning for other things. Even your heart rate will go down. Even your digestive system that uses energy for all those things, it slows down. Even your immune system that uses energy, it slows down, you know? And that is your metabolic, the internal energy, which you also burn, which is as important as the energy that you don't burn in doing exercise. If you don't balance the two, of course, you will be doing exercise and the body will be reduced, will be stopping the one from inside. And long after you do the thing, you lose the weight, the body brings it back. 
they said, when you look at people who do biggest loser, they will lose weight. You don't have biggest loser reunion. Why? Because they lost weight. And by the end of the year, they've all gone back because the body tells them, no, this is not your weight. This is not you. This is not your body. You don't feel like it's your body. You don't feel like it's you. And the body looks every way to bring it back. But if you are doing intermittently, you do, you know, do exercise like intermittently. Do exercise in chunks. Do exercise in bit by bit. Do exercise like you are snacks. That would be good. The other thing is that in this other research here, they take women, it was done with women who work in the hotel. The ones who fix the bed, do the cleaning, do everything, the people, the house workers in the hotel. They take a group of women, they ask them, how much exercise do you do? They say, how, I, I, we don't do no exercise. We don't even have any time for this. When can somebody do exercise? By the time we go home, we are tired. So they take a group of women, they take one group, they sat them down, they said, do you know that according to the Surgeon General, that's in America, they, they said, if you change the beddings, say you change the bed, the bed sheet, the blanket, when you do them for 15 minutes, you lost 15 calories, you lost 40 calories. If you vacuum the room or vacuum the place for, for um, 15 minutes, you lost 50 calories. If you clean the bathroom for 15 minutes, you lost 60 calories. So do you realize that when you do these things, you are house sure you are already doing the exercise that needs to be done? They explain that to the women. And after a year, they take them. If you look at the, the graph that are on, on your right, the women that we are explained that they blew this thing, they blew, they lost weight, several kilograms that they lost. Their body fat went down, their blood pressure went down drastically, and their job satisfaction went high. The people who were not explained, whom they didn't explain, their body weight, they didn't lose anything much. Their blood pressure did go down small. Their body fat was practically the same and their job satisfaction, they were still not happy with their jobs. So like I mentioned, be it your relationship with yourself, your relationship with others, it is also your relationship with your exercise, your relationship with your work. Whatever you think, it is not what you are doing. It's the interpretation you give yourself about it. Please, if you look at these things, these are the things that are destroying us. And, uh, like I said, I want you to be the judge and I want you to be the probation officer. If from today, your relationship with stress, your relationship with food, your relationship with, um, um, with other people, yourself, with your God, and with the environment, that is relationship, and then your relationship with movement. If you can change these four things, at least I will know that today was not wasted. Please be the judge and see if you can strengthen your relationship with these things. Thank you very much. Wow. 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 Um, <laughs> Hey, Edwin, thank you so much. That that was wonderful. It's, been, it's going to be two hours. <laughs> yeah, you've been you've been talking for for one, one hour, hour 40, minutes. forty minutes nonstop. Okay. So that 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 was a great presentation. And uh, uh, Cyril Tangwa, thank you so much. I could see the, okay. the letters. The do, do we stop now, or do we do question and answers before we? No, we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, I could see uh, you are putting some headlines, just just the the, the pointers. Yeah. The chat. So if there is anybody who wants to to go back to the chat, we have twenty one chats uh, on, on this on the on this call. So uh, that will be a very good reminder of the 
the 24 participants here. Yeah. The indicators here yeah, uh, that have been summarized throughout the, the, the presentation. So let us just open room for, the easiest way is that, uh, can we raise our hands? If you go to participants, um, click your name, uh, sorry, no, to uh, reactions, and then you raise your hand. Uh, if you have a question, then that way we should be able to, to ask and answer questions. Uh, some of our members, Shufai, uh, you're welcome. Yaya, Kansi, Kizi, Lydia, uh, Sheikh Even, um, and, and I think uh, Emadi. So welcome to the welcome to the to the talk. And let's just uh, if you want to ask a question, please. And Auntie Rosemary and Pa, pa Evans, uh, welcome as well. <clears throat> Let me just give you people a, a, a shout out. And uh, Thierry, um, a welcome. Um, you either raise your hand by putting it up or you use the, 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 the Zoom uh, reactions and, 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 and raise your hand that way if you have a question. Because it's such a powerful presentation. I know it's very perfect, but it's not so perfect that at least nobody has a question to ask. That's true. The engine will be disappointed if you say there's no question. Then he might be thinking nobody was listening. Any hand up? I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look. Challenge me, we either understood everything or we understand nothing. Yeah, at all. Uh, uh, 